I'm not sure about you, but I find it distracting when a game can't stick to its target frame rate. Hi, I'm Ram Nexus. I make videos looking at technical aspects of some of my favorite games. I spent the last week trying out a different way to test frame rate in Fallout 4. It's quite a fun test, so I'll explain what the test is all about, and I'll show you the results that I found. As you know, in May, Bethesda released a next-gen update for Fallout 4. On the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles, you can now change the game's target frame rate, which is very useful. You can also set the game to prioritize performance or to prioritize visuals. In my last video, I went through this update in some detail, so have a look at that for more information. In that previous video, I tested frame rate on my Series S, but today I'm looking at the Series X and the PlayStation 5. This new test is a test of frame rate consistency. I'm not sure about you, but I find it distracting when a game can't stick to its target frame rate. Good visuals are important, yes. A high frame rate is very important to me too, but more important than either of those is a consistent frame rate. But why do we need a new test? Well, one of the great things about Fallout 4 is that it feels to me like a real lived in dynamic world. Protect and serve. And one way Bethesda has pulled this off is by including a little bit of randomness into the game environment. Sure, we have random encounters in the game, which are often fun. For example, two death claws fighting or strange. But if I reload and play from the same save game a few times, I start to see how the game world has changed a little bit each time I reload. It's not fully random, so you won't find raiders replaced by death claws or whatever, but enemies won't be present sometimes, or they may be fighting other enemies. There might be some times when they don't notice me at all, or, or they'll open fire at me before I've seen them. But this little bit of unpredictability is a clever way to make a game feel less like a rigidly engineered gaming environment and more like a living world where you're not certain what's going to be around the next corner. It is actually quite a clever game design. Why am I going on about this? Well, because the game world is a bit different each time I load a save, it is a bit difficult to properly compare frame rates between each graphics mode or even between consoles. I uh, say so the solution I found it is a lot of fun. I call it the run for your life test. So I planned a set route through the middle of Boston and just started running this over and over again in each of the graphics modes. It's kind of a turkey shoot, except I'm the turkey. So here are the rules I set myself for this run for your life test. First of all, you have to say it like that. You have to say run for your life. <laughs> I had to follow the same route each time. I tried to make sure not to look around too much just to keep frame rates consistent. Importantly, I couldn't shoot back, which was a little frustrating, but uh, we'll talk more on that a bit later. But most importantly, I could never stop running. The run took me just over two minutes. My thinking was that this longer but repeatable activity would mean all the little changes in the game between loads would have a smaller impact on the final FPS average score. And it seemed to work. If you like the video so far, then I ask you to give me a like. If you are interested in this type of content, feel free to subscribe as I, as I will put out other videos like this in the future. I'll go through what I found in a minute, but to prove my earlier point, I'll show you that running this game route many times on both the Xbox Series X and the PS5 highlighted to me how much variation there can be in Fallout. There are times when you'll run past the Raiders before they even notice you and you're gone before they have time to fire. But at other times, they'll just open up straight away. I only got one melee attack on me and this mutant hound turned up occasionally but when he turned up providing i timed it right he actually distracted the enemy so i could run straight past them one interesting thing i found is that i thought i could hear someone chasing me every so often now raiders are really good at telegraphing their positions by all that trash talk oh, hell no. but occasionally i was sure i could hear footsteps behind me the first time this happened it kind of scared the crap out of me. I was not expecting it. After doing this run through maybe 20 times, this dude decided to start throwing grenades at me, which was a bit of a surprise. So I'm convinced that the enemy AI is learning my patterns of behavior over time. Just imagine that in a game. 
As mentioned, I tried this run for your life test out on both my Xbox Series X and my PlayStation 5. Obviously, I can't share saves between those two consoles. So on the Xbox, my character is male and he's level 74. On the PlayStation 5, she's level 42. And what's her name, Codsworth? Miss Kiddo. Welcome back, Mum. That's right. Because she was lower level, she had to occasionally take a stim pack for fear of um, carking it before she got to the end of the, end of the bloody run. One interesting thing that I added is that both characters wore the legendary destroyers left and right leg armor, which each have the sprinter bonus of plus ten percent movement. I think the effects for wearing both stack, so I'm running at 20% faster than normal. And there's a couple of times which that was really useful. I also made sure there were no mods enabled. So as far as results go, when running the run for your life test, I saw no noticeable difference in frame rates between the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. So I'll just show you the PlayStation 5 results. During this test, I saw no drops at all in frame rate during the two minute run for your life test when the game was set to either of the 40 FPS mode, either visuals or performance mode. It's just one nice clean line. And just note, 40 FPS is only available if your console is connected to a TV or monitor that can run at 120 Hertz. Protect and serve. When the game set to 30 fps the game stuck hard to that 30 fps it never dropped only the 60 fps mode had drops in frame rate the drops were worse in visuals mode than performance mode as you'd expect it's important to note that the 60 fps performance mode is bethesda's recommended mode and it's the game's default mode so my take home message is that there are drops in FPS in both 60 FPS modes. To get the full picture of what's going on, we'd need to know how resolution and draw distance was impacted for each graphics mode. But I think these frame rate drops in both 60 FPS modes are the most noticeable distraction. So my recommendation is still to play the game in 40 FPS visuals mode. And that's what I still do. So what about the 1440p mode? If you saw my last video, you'll remember I mentioned Bethesda had introduced a special graphics mode in its initial next-gen update, which came out in April. If you set your console to output at 1440p, it would set the game to run in 1440p mode, which means it's generating fewer pixels on the screen and it has more resources available to generate a higher quality graphics mode. That's the idea at least. However, with update version 2, which is what we have now, there is no mention of a 1440p mode in the patch notes at all. I've only done a couple of tests, so I can't be definitive, but I've got to say frame rate drops are still present. Um, there may be resolution and other visual effects are changed. I can't be certain. I guess my point here, though, is that either the 1440p mode is not actually supported anymore with the second update, although Digital Foundry said it is, and they, they uh, tend to know what they're talking about. Or perhaps the 1440p mode is not the ultimate graphics mode that I kind of made it out to be in my last video. So either way, I don't actually use the 1440p mode anymore. Just a quick note on stability. Before I settled on the run for your life test, I tried the Ridwind Taxi, which is that time in the game when you travel with dance from the police station to the Ridwind the first time. When I was collecting footage for it, I recorded this stability issue game performance did vary so this is a graph of a dodgy 30 fps run where there were really noticeable dips in frame rate and i knew by this stage of my testing that there shouldn't really be any drops in 30 fps mode if this issue happened on a pc i just think that perhaps there was another program running in the background but on playstation 5 i made the recording and then i quit out and closed the game rebooted the PlayStation 5 and then re-ran the run and I got this result. So nothing changed except that I closed the game down and rebooted it. It's something to know in case you find things aren't running exactly as you're expecting them to. It makes me reflect that games and consoles are so complex nowadays and the idea that a game just works when it runs on a console, it's a great idea, but I'm not sure it holds true anymore. All right, let's wrap this up. I'm going to call this the last section, Revenge. 
as you probably remember, one of my rules was that I could not shoot back. And I'm not joking, I literally ran this route about 50 times. And to be honest, by the end of it, it was a bit mind numbing and I was going a bit crazy. So as therapy, once the testing was all completed, I did a couple of weapons free runs and boy was it fun. So I'll end this video with me ending them, motherfuckers. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Ram Nexus out.